Hey, it's Margie with the Asking Spot. It's four days past uh, Hurricane Ian and the end of it, and uh, we were very, very fortunate. We were not in an evacuation zone, so we kind of knew that the odds were likely that it would be good, and thankfully it was. Um, our house was fine, a lot of cleanup, and you know, a lot of debris came down. But thankfully our house and my sister's house where we did go and evacuate, even though we weren't in an evacuation zone, she just had a newer home with hurricane proof windows, yada, yada, yada. So we're all good, but Florida as a state, even my own city that I'm in right now, not so good. So in the description box below, I have got some links to how you can help out if to you want to. And thank you very much still trying to plow through the case of individual plastic apple juices we needed for a diet requirement after one of my kids got out of the hospital. Now, I know I shouldn't have bought them in individual containers. I also know clear plastic, it does recycle. And if I had to do it all over again, I promise you, I wouldn't do it this way. But now I have them in my hand, I'm gonna see what I can do to upcycle them so they don't go to a landfill or anything else. We have a plan? We'll see. I've come up with a Halloween decor idea. Not sure if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I used a little jute, tied it around the top just to make it stem, and then I spray painted the lids black and drew little faces on them with just a Sharpie, no big deal. I thought that was gonna be the end of it, and I thought, wait a minute, these would look really cute hanging. So I went ahead and drilled little holes in all the lids and used again the more jute to make them so they could hang. But then I came up with another idea, and here's how that went. So my goal is to make the witch's broom in something that I can just immediately, when Halloween's over with, I can just sort of chuck it into our mulch pickup that they have, yard waste pickup. So uh, on my walk with the dogs, I managed to get from a neighbor's their last time doing yard waste stuff, and they had a nice long palm frond in it, so I just got the stick of that. And then I got some pine needles. We have a lot of the Australian pines here, so they're big, long needles. And then I got some jute, and all I'm doing is tying it to the base of that big palm frond, and that is now my witch's broom. The broom. To add a little more spooky fun to this witch's broom, I'm gonna have it floating on our front porch, right where the little trick-or-treaters come up. How I'm doing that is using some fishing wire and one of those uh, you know, temporary hooks that you can put on things. I'm also gonna have little jack-o'-lanterns hanging from it, just to kinda you know, make sure everyone knows that this is a snazzy kind of witch. Bitch. I'm gonna be changing up a couple of things, and one of which is this board I got if you saw my thrift haul video, do one of these and one of these. And um, no, you already knew that. No, no. Um, okay, so you knew that. I'm gonna use this though because it was two bucks and I was able to get it at my thrift store and I'm gonna paint over this and make a little sign that's perfect for Halloween. But just a heads up, that's a great source for things you wanna craft, especially if you're gonna make it for Halloween decor, you kinda want that spooky edge about it 
nothing says spooky like overly crafted stuff. <laughs> Here it goes. First thing though is I'm going to paint it with some chalk paint. I'm just using some Waverly white paint. Uh, any chalk paint would work. Actually, I think any acrylic paint would work. This just has some really great coverage in it. So that's why I like using it a little faster. I wanted to give it sort of a plume of purple and blue and make it almost like cloud-like. Looking back at this video, I kind of wished I'd stopped at just the splattering. I kind of think that looked cool too. Okay, too far. You went too far. I'm going to do a print transfer from my inkjet printer. And uh, I've done this before with photos and whatnot, but it's kind of the same principle. So I'll have that and I'll have a link in the description below. Just remember, you have to have it in mirror writing when you print it out so that it will transfer and still be legible. Of course, this is Halloween, so you know, anything goes but just to be on the safe side. And for my transfer medium on this one, I think in the past I've used uh, polycrylic. I'm gonna go ahead and use some Mod Podge and I'm gonna do it in a gloss. So that'll hopefully give some sort of dimension to this. It's dried, so now we're gonna give it a light mist. So once this dries fully, I will go ahead and put a top coat on it. But right now it's still a little damp. Before I put the top coat on, I decided to darken up the lettering using an oil paint pen that I happen to have. I think though a Sharpie would have done just as well. Left-handed. Left-handed, probably a witch. Ooh. Now to hang the sign, I did pick up some of these hooks from the Dollar Tree. And you know, they're fine. I could leave it as is. I could paint them and it'd be just great. But seeing as I had more than I actually needed, I thought I'd give a try using some air dry clay and see if I could sculpt something a little creepier around the outside of this hook. Learn the hard way that you can't just use any air dry clay when you're trying to do something with an armature. Like in the case of, I'm gonna be working on making these hooks and I'm having them underneath the clay. An air dry clay that is earth based shrinks too much and you get lots of cracking. However, it works just fine if you want to just leave it on its own to make something crafty and lovely. Um, I've got some Christmas gift ideas planned. So the clay that I have bought that I can't use anymore for armature stuff, I will be using for that in a future video. Another reason to subscribe. But uh, I have learned from folks like uh, Yvette DIY or DIY Yvette, I'll have a link to her below. And also Red Rocking Bird, she is wonderful. Again, description links below. But they both are big fans, and so am I, of DAS, especially if you're doing something where you have clay around something else. It's got some paper in it, so it doesn't shrink quite as much, and it minimizes cracking. Of course, you know, there are other mistakes you can make that causes cracking. So like I said, watch their videos or any of the other videos I've done on DIY and uh, air dry clay, and you'll probably learn more about how to avoid cracking. When it comes to the doing these though, make sure that you don't let your clay go over the edge of the hook itself because that might cause a gap from the adhesive tape and the wall so it would make it not as useful or successful. Just a heads up there. 
Once it had dried completely, I went ahead and painted it, gave it a little color, did a top coat, and then followed the instructions for hanging it on the wall, you know, clean, leave to stick and adhesive for 24 hours before hanging anything. And then I put up my witch's sign with the broom and the jack-o'-lanterns, and I even pulled out my um, Halloween decor from last year that I made, which by the way, if you missed that, I'll do one of those too. And uh, yeah. Here's how it looks. Thank you so much for watching the asking spot. And uh, I think I might have some bloopers coming up next. My goal is to have you not hear all the lawn stuff that's going on. Um, but yeah. Yes. No, I am not expecting. They understand you're too old. All right, so you figured that one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the thing is, uh, the thrift stores, I, I don't know if you saw my thrift haul video, I'll do one of these, um, put a link in the description box, one of these. Hi you. What you doing by you? <laughs>